Let's take a look at a couple of SN1 reactions that might require a couple or one or two additional, more interesting uh, steps during the mechanism. So this first uh, reaction here, we'll call it A, has a tertiary bromide, and we have uh, methanol as our apparent reagent. We should also think of it as the solvent, uh, because methanol is a liquid, and if we're going to use methanol as our reagent, most likely our nucleophile, um, generally we'd set up the reaction so that we just throw this tertiary bromide into a uh, small flask full of methanol, and there we have solvent and plenty of nucleophiles available. So this is a tertiary substrate, and so that means uh, it should be obvious to us that the first step will be loss of leaving group so that we produce the cation, and it was a tertiary bromine, so now this is going to be a tertiary cation, and of course that's reasonably stable, so this is a good um, arrow push to show. And the next step is going to be attack of the nucleophile, or in this case the solvent, as a nucleophile on our tertiary cation. And so we end up with this, and remember that that oxygen we made a new bond here, and I'll highlight that new bond with a blue arrow. But that oxygen takes along everything else. Just like when you enter the room, first pushing the door open with your hand, the rest of yourself comes along too. It's not just your hand that enters the room. And so we need to bring along everything else that's attached to that oxygen, the H and the methyl. And thus we've given a third bond to O, so we have a cation now. And so this is not the, the last... Um, this is not the final product. We still need to get rid of this extra hydrogen. So whenever we're faced with a cation on an oxygen, and one of the three bonds is a hydrogen, or more than that, um, generally we're going to take another molecule of the solvent, or whatever base is handy. And in this case, uh, this is the most likely base. It is a slightly stronger base than the bromide that we lost during the first step. So we're going to do this final proton transfer step. And that gets us to here. Remember that your product will always be neutral. And so this uh, nucleophilic attack here gives us a cation product. The proton transfer is the final step, uh, and that helps us to neutralize it. So here is our optional, not always needed, proton transfer step. And in this case, it happened at the end of the reaction. And we could have predicted that by observing that our nucleophile here was going to be neutral. If we use a neutral nucleophile, as we've seen, we create a third bond to the oxygen, and that gives us a cation intermediate, uh, which we need to then neutralize before we get to the final product. So a neutral nucleophile will generally always require a proton transfer step at the end. Let's take a look at this reaction uh, on the bottom here. We have a secondary bromide. We've got a good nucleophile here. And since we're exploring extra steps that might happen in a SN1 reaction, let's assume this is SN1. In the future, we'll have a few more clues, uh, or maybe we'll tell you that it's SN1. Um, but of course, the first step is loss of the leaving group. And we can go up here and label that properly as well. So here's my cation. I have the leaving group now floating around. Um, and we can, of course, this is a secondary cation. And as we, as we should have asked ourselves up here with our tertiary, uh, can this cation rearrange? Tertiary, obviously, the answer is no. But with a secondary, that's a good clue that you might have a rearrangement possible. And if you observe this carbon right here, it has four bonds to it. It's considered a quaternary carbon. If I were to take one of those bonds and quench this cation, leaving behind only three on that middle carbon, it would be a tertiary cation. And so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do a rearrangement. And so the cation has appeared to move, although we know that it's the methyl that has moved. This methyl has migrated uh, and left behind a, an empty orbital, and that's the cation. And so now we're ready to add the nucleophile to our tertiary cation. And our nucleophile, of course, is the iodine 
The sodium plays no role, it's just there. So please ignore it, don't let it distract you. The iodine attacks, and we can show the nucleophilic attack, arrow push, and then the product is that. So there's our product. So this is an SN1 mechanism that has the optional, sometimes necessary, uh, rearrangement step in the middle. And your clue here is going to be the fact that we formed a secondary cation, and then we have to explore the uh, two carbons next to it. And of course, we are not going to migrate that. We're not going to rearrange so the cation moves to the uh, the outer carbon, but potentially we could create a tertiary carbon, a tertiary cation, uh, through this rearrangement that I've shown here. Um, it's also possible that we could create a small amount of this product, which of course is the non-rearranged product, just where the iodine attacks the secondary cation. This would be a minor product, and the reason is that this intramolecular rearrangement step right here is much faster than the iodine and the secondary cation coming together. So it's much, much more likely that the molecule will rearrange before the iodine has a chance to act as the nucleophile. Uh, and that's because it's uh, it's all one, one molecule. We don't have to wait for two molecules to encounter each other in our solution. Uh, it can happen within the molecule. So it's intramolecular. And I'll try to write that here. And this is going to be faster than, uh, that would be the intermolecular, meaning between two molecules, nucleophilic attack. So the intermolecular rearrangement is generally much faster than the intermolec intermolecular uh, nucleophilic attack. So if you're asked for the major product, which generally most questions say that, you only need to show this one that I have in a box right here. Uh, but if maybe if you want to show all the products or just be complete, you could label this other one as the minor product, understanding that you know maybe it's present in five percent uh, um, of the total.